this talk is essentially an idea, an idea on creating, spreading and sustaining wildfires. And through the talk, uh, I will tell you why we need these wildfires. And also, by the end of the talk, hopefully if I am able to convey it to you, I would urge you to participate in contributing to these wildfires. Now, creating wildfires can be done or wildfires can be created by igniting sparks and multiplying them so that you have fires which build into a wildfire. And as I refer to a wildfire, it is not uh, or rather it has been witnessed before right here in this country. In the past when these wildfires were witnessed, everybody in this country is aware that it was primarily to liberate the country and at that point of time, the idea was to take charge and essentially build a country of our dreams. But at this point, I would like you to examine this. This is an extract from a United Nations Millennium Development Goals report of 2014, where it is highlighted that one third of the world's extreme poor live in this country. Also, India witnesses highest of the under 5 deaths, which in numbers is approximately 13 lakh children die in this country as a result of malnutrition. Now, I would also like to share some more statistics and I am taking in this talk, I am taking malnutrition as an example. Today, and these are some recent statistics. So, as on 2013, so situation has improved. The data that has been collected from 2009 to 2013, which is not yet officially released, says that we have about 30 percent children under 3 years who are malnourished. But at the same time, among adults, one third of adult men and women are also malnourished. And that has serious consequences for these people. The adults, for example, if they are malnourished, suffer from very low immunity. For example, for one of the examples which has been highlighted in the media is tuberculosis. Now, among children, if or rather among children who suffer from malnourishment, one of the saddest things about that is the damage that it causes. It is an irreversible damage. So, no matter how well they are fed in the later stages of their life, that damage cannot be reversed. And that is one of the saddest things about that. A child when malnourished in the womb and in the first two years is unlikely to grow to its fullest physical and mental potential. Also, that leads to stunted mental growth, which means these children will have tremendous difficulties in schooling. No matter how good the schooling is, no matter what the means are they will have difficulties in schooling, which will obviously lead to other issues in their life. They, these children also will again suffer from susceptibility to infection. So, they will be the ones who will visit hospitals or would be hospitalized, likely to be hospitalized, need more and more medical attention. Now, the thing is, these things together usually would put such citizens when they have grown into a cycle from where it is very difficult to come out, which will definitely involve poverty, very likely to rather I would say would involve even poverty. Now, going from there, one can also think of it in this manner that malnourishment having looked at all this is a continuing disaster in this country. And for a couple of decades and it affects very large number of people, if you think about one third children, one third adults, men and women. It is a very large number. Even though that is the case that it affects so many numbers, it does not get that kind of attention while one would say other disasters should certainly get attention, but here it is. So, one can ask and question and now maybe a broader question, malnourishment is an example, but one could ask, one could ask a broader question that in the same context as I started out from first slide, why are we not aiming to light a fire and that is just symbolic. 
It's saying in spirit, why are we not aiming to light that fire in this country? There are enough sparks. We have heard sparks in the morning. Country is full of sparks. Maybe this is one thought that maybe we do not identify as in people here, people like us. Maybe we do not identify with these problems in a certain way. Maybe somewhere at the back of our minds, it is just their problems. And these kind of thoughts have been expressed this morning as well. Is it that nobody is doing anything about it? I already said, there are enough sparks. There are enough sparks among us everywhere, throughout the country. But at the same time, that's what I say. But there is no fire. So maybe something needs to be done, something needs to be thought in that direction, that can we multiply and unite these sparks? Can we make it into a fire? with obvious consequences. So, I go on from here to say that maybe these are some thoughts. To go from sparks to fire, we need to clearly emphasize that unless, and I, I definitely want to emphasize that unless significant number of citizens, and maybe it, one could put a number to it, but it should be crores of people considering the size of our country. Unless significant number get involved, change may not happen. And when I say that, I, I mean it that maybe we walk into 2100, the next century, and the country does not look significantly different. Maybe there are improvements in statistics what we see today. The other thing is, we should emphasize that all problems are everybody's problems, not theirs. They are everybody's problems. If you, if you, if you apply logic, one can definitely get convinced or if you don't want to apply a logic either way, emphasize that all problems are everybody's problems. Saturate the country's atmosphere with the fuel of intolerance towards the enemies and those are the enemies. And when I say this, I mean it in the sense that Indians should say, I will not tolerate malnourishment in this country. I was speaking to Professor Fatak, he said even one child, we should not tolerate one child who is malnourished in this country. So that is the fuel we should have of intolerance in the country. So I am going to present now a precursor to the proposed approach. It is not the end, but it could be a precursor. So a web based effort initially, which is sparks to fire.org. So, out of this, what one could do possibly is suggest ways through which anybody with a few minutes or to a life to offer can contribute. It should not be exclusive. It need not be only NGOs, social workers. It should involve citizens. So, we can say citizen social workers. We should Follow it up by documenting, recognizing and publicizing, very important doc besides this, publicizing efforts by citizens, irrespective of their magnitude and nature, how small, a, even if as it was already said, even if it affected one life, it should be highlighted, it should be publicized. And as a result, what is going to happen? Maybe, maybe we could not say that. Maybe kuch kar sakta hu. Maybe everybody possibly would start seeing that. And eventually, if we are able to do that better and better, we unite all sparks and ignite a fire, as I said in symbolic terms. The other thing is through this kind of effort, one can attempt to make as many Indians aware of the sparks. Sparks of different kinds. They could be the ones which are in limelight, they could be the ones which are not known at all. They could be in cities, they could be in remotest of the places and it is possible. We could attempt to answer these questions for each of these sparks. Who are these sparks? In people, organizations, where are they? In the entire country. What do they do? So then that need not be only, that information need not be exclusive to only few. How did they get started? Very, very critical. And what were their initial struggles? 
so that if we have these kind of things, it will help us multiply sparks. We would like and everybody who sort of gets into this should learn from them without any time, without any time being invested in reinventing the wheel. There should be no again acceptance of reinventing the wheel. And you have already seen this morning spark, so every spark must, must get replicated. How do we gather, gather information about these sparks all over the country? So there are possibilities, one possibility could be having again in the same spirit citizen reporters. People who can report sparks in their area, in the local region. And we could put them in these different categories and this list is, is reasonably large. This is only to show that, okay, here is some possible things. Maybe in some way it could be prioritized, but citizens reporters in certain format could start reporting so that this gets populated. And as a result, hopefully we can make as many citizens inspired to act, assuming that we already give them ideas whether they have only a few minutes to offer or a life to offer or, or, or whatever else in between. Now this is an example that, as I said, I have been using malnourishment as an example, malnutrition as an example, Akshay Patra is an example which has been providing food to children nearly 1.4 million, 14 lakh children every day. But this can also link in another way. I may feel I cannot imagine that kind of scale, I am an individual. Do I build it? What do I do? But at the same time, I can say, how can we continue to eat and live when on, a, on an average more than a lakh children are dying every month out of malnourishment? How can we afford? How can we continue that? So, one way of thinking about this could be, can we not build the spirit in this country of every individual home be an Akshay Patra? The home itself, home has everything scale down what Akshay Patra is doing. We have a kitchen every day. So, Dabbawalas of Mumbai are enough inspiration in terms of distribution. It needs initiatives. So, if we think along these lines, can we not eliminate malnutrition? Like Professor Fatak said this morning, not even one child, which has held us back for decades in the next few years, Like malnourishment, as I said, like malnutrition, this is an example, we can take on other enemies, fight, eliminate these enemies, decide to eliminate these enemies if we build a wildfire. Again, that symbolic wildfire, bringing, bringing citizens together. And these are some, some, some things, some steps, just to reiterate, that by becoming intolerant, so we have to become intolerant. We have to say that no, we cannot tolerate malnutrition. Even though it is not in the mainstream media, it is not on the main pages of the newspapers, we should not tolerate. Even though it may not affect my daily life, still I should not tolerate malnutrition. And we should take charge in addressing these problems. Volunteering as citizen reporters to connect the sparks, because that is needed. Like it has been already mentioned, it is about stories. We need to share these stories. As many people, as many Indians must know these stories as possible. Making others aware and inspired to build groups of citizen social workers. However small a contribution. And then eventually, obviously, initiate, lead, contribute to efforts in these different areas. Not just malnutrition, that was just an example. Now, I kind of come to the summarization then. That if a significant part of around 30 crore, this is an estimate from the internet, around 30 crore middle and upper class partner the rest, can we not partner? We can eliminate the enemies of today and usher in another wave of independence. That's another wave of independence from the enemies which are currently larger than we have ever faced. And I end up with this last slide, we have an inspiration, part inspiration in this. We have done it. We have done it at a scale 
which is unimaginable. India has probably, as I know, has been declared a polio-free country. So we can take inspiration from this.